Hello, artist! Welcome back to another Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Folsom, and I'm so happy and excited to be here with all of you today. Um, We are in episode 19. I apologize, last month I got off on the numbers of my episodes. It happens, right? So episode 19 is today, and the topic is actually a question that I have for all of you. And the question is, what are you committed to? Maybe you've never really thought about that question before or um, don't think about it on a day-to-day basis, but this question is so, so important. What is it that you are committed to in every area of your life? So I find it interesting because I think that a lot of the problems that we run up against as artists, uh, problems that we face, issues that we deal with, Um, It all comes down to, in my opinion, a lack of clarity of what you are committed to to in this life, what you're all about. Um, So, for example, if you are committed to your financial success as an artist, you are not going to underprice your work, undervalue your work, right? If you're committed to a happy and grateful Uh, life. You're not going to be committed to finding everything that's wrong in your day or with your life. (laughs) You know, so a lot of times just getting very, very clear on what it is that we are committed to. You know, we're human beings who have free will and we get to decide in this life what it is that we are committed to. Um, And so a lot of times throughout my days or throughout my weeks, if I find myself engaging in thoughts, in uh, behaviors that are not in line with what I am really committed to in this life, I will actually um, stop myself and I will say, no, that's not what I'm committed to. This is what I'm committed to in this life. This is what I'm committed, how I'm committed to being, living, doing, having, <laughs> experiencing in this life. So so I think it's really, really an important question uh, for all of us to answer in a multiple, multiple different areas of our life in general, in our relationships, in our business experiences, um, in our painting, in our painting practice. So for example, if you are committed to success, you've made a decision that you're going to be successful as an artist, you're committed to being a successful artist, then you are not going to be playing small. You are not going to be giving into self-doubt all the time and um, thinking that you're not good enough and and you're not you're not going to give into procrastination, right? If you are committed, truly, truly committed to being a successful artist, you will not let self-doubt, procrastination, laziness, you know, you will not let all of these things come in and uh, ruin your success, right? Like you will be so aware of these are the things that do not contribute to my success and I'm not committed to those things. I'm committed to being successful. So, a lot of times questions that I get from, from the artists in my c- communities and the artists that I mentor um, all have to do with the issues of this commitment. Um, so if you are committed to uh, reaching success as an artist, you know that you're going to show up in your studio. You know that you're going to work hard to develop good habits, good studio habits, good put in the painting time, you know. Um, if you want to have financial success as an artist, again, you know, and that's what you're committed to, then you are not going to continue to put your work in situations where it's not going to be valued, where um, you're going to have to underprice your work in order to sell it, for example, right? So 
a lot of times we do find ourselves in these situations. We try things out to see, you know, is this the right fit for me? Um, is this is this the right opportunity? And the feedback that we get will tell from those experiences will tell us whether or not they are the right fit or not, right? So, for example. Um, you know, of course, for years, I, I tried a variety of different things when it came to selling my own artwork. Um, I was in galleries, you know, and I had, I was in, my work was in over 10 galleries um, across the country. And however, it was not, the feedback I was getting was that that was not working for me. And um, I was not selling enough paintings. The galleries weren't selling enough paintings in order for me to have financial stability and, and financial success, right? Um, they weren't even selling enough for me to be able to survive as an artist financially, let alone thrive. And so I had to eventually had to eventually decide, you know, what is it that I'm committed to here? Am I committed to my own financial future, my own financial success, or not? Or am I committed to this outward appearance of, of being in all these so-called really great galleries um, and continuing to put my eggs in that basket without getting the financial rewards back? And I'm not, and you know, I didn't just try one gallery, y'all. I tried a bunch of galleries and this went on for at least five years. I tried being in galleries, working with galleries for gosh, five to seven years and multiple galleries. So it's not like I just tried one thing and that didn't work out, right? So sometimes we have to be careful of that too. Like, oh, you know, maybe we didn't put in enough time to really see if that effort was going to pay off or that commitment was going to uh, pay off for us. But whenever you are getting constant feedback like that uh, from, from those situations, then you have to make a decision of, you know, what it is that you're committed to. So for me, I had to make a decision of, listen, I, I am choosing to be committed to my financial success and the stability of my fi financial future as an artist. And the feedback I'm getting from this opportunity and this experience is telling me that it's not able to give me that. So I have to try something else. I have to do something else. Why? Because I'm committed to my financial future as an artist. I do not want to be a starving artist anymore, period. And that was the choice that I made. And so then, of course, comes um, the part of trying to figure out, okay, so if I am committed to my financial success as an artist, what are the other options available to me out there and start to workshop those ideas, start to test those ideas out? But what I see happening a lot of times is that artists will have two conflicting commitments, <laughs> They, 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 want to, uh, they want to believe that they are committed to their financial success, but yet then they have this other commitment over here that says, but I also want to be perceived a certain way and have a certain amount of status by being in the galleries, even though the galleries are not bringing financial success. Or they hold two opposing commitments of, I am... Uh, they want to believe that they're committed to their financial success, but then when it comes time to do the work on their business, right, um, they, they're also not committed to that. They're not committed to putting in the time on their business to have that financial success. They're more committed to um, just staying in their comfort zone and, and painting all the time rather than building their career, rather than um, building that financial success. So I'm using financial success as an example here, one example of a commitment. Um, but I think it's a really powerful example because you can see um, clearly how artists will either A, not totally be committed to that outcome and that result in their life, or B, they will have two opposing commitments 
that are, you know, fighting against each other. And, and that brings a lot of difficulty and a lot of confusion and a lot of struggle. So you have to decide, like, what is your top commitments? What is it that really matters to you? What's really important to you? You know, financial success isn't uh, that big of a priority if that doesn't matter that much to you. But, you know, being perceived a certain way as an artist does, then obviously you want to choose... Um, your rep reputation as an artist or recognition or the status symbols um, of, of that, all of that that goes with that, you know. Um, but you, you need to choose one commitment and stick with that commitment. Um, the same thing goes for our art practice. You know, if we are really truly committed to our growth as an artist to improving as an artist, you are going to be committed to putting in your painting time, to showing up, to doing the work, you know, and you're also going to be aware of all the things, all the ways that, that, that things come in, bad habits that you have, negative beliefs, negative behaviors, negative thoughts, um, taking people's criticism to heart too much. You're really going, when you are truly, truly committed to your growth and progress as an artist, you're going to become aware of all of the things that come in to try to disrupt that growth and progress. And when you have made a very firm commitment to your artistic growth and progress, you are going to say no to those other things, right? <laughs> you can't, again, you can't have two conflicting commitments. So you cannot every day live in, in the self-deprecation as an artist, self-doubt, self-criticism of your work. Um, you can't live every day in procrastination. You can't, uh, you know, be putting off your painting time, your studio time, if you want to really grow and develop as an artist. Right, So those are the things that you can't do. Those are no-nos <laughs> if you're truly committed to your growth and progress as an artist. You also can't just stay in your private little, your private little hole and just try to self-teach yourself all the time either if you really want to grow and progress as an artist. So you have to decide what it is that you're committed to. Are you committed to all of these old habits, negative patterns? Are you committed to staying safe and protected because you've been so wounded in the past by people's criticism or you're so afraid of rejection that you won't take risks, that you won't take leaps of faith, that you won't put yourself out there, you won't be brave, you won't be bold? You know, so if that's what you're committed to, then you're not committed to growth and progress as an artist. And you're going to get back very, very limited results. You know, it's the same thing, of course, in our uh, relationships. If we are committed to love and harmony, then we are not going to be engaging in behavior in our relationships that are causing conflict and drama and suffering and fighting, you know. <laughs> You know, if you're committed to your health, then you're not going to be eating KFC every day and smoking and drinking and not exercising, right? So um, some of those examples, it's kind of maybe easier to see how, you know, obvious the commitment is or is not. But a lot of times what I find um, with working with artists and a lot of art friends that I've made over the last 15 years is that for some reason, being an artist and, and being a professional artist and making a living as an artist, there, there, there seems to come in all of this weird kind of gray area stuff um, that gets everybody confused and conflicted. And I think it's actually not confusing. I think it's just a matter of a decision, of deciding what it is that you are most committed to. Because it's not to say that you can't, you know, um, <laughs> it's not to say sometimes that you can't have both things, like that you can't be in galleries and be a financial success. That might end up being the case for you. And that is fantastic and wonderful. 
But what it means is that whenever you make a commitment of what it is that you truly want, that you're focused on that 100%. You know, so um, nothing's going to stop you. You're going to be totally unstoppable once you are super, super clear on this is what I value the most. This is what I'm committed to the most. And so anything that starts to get in the way of that, I've got to deal with it. I've got to, I've got to rearrange things. I've got to clean things up, right? You know, um, for example, if you are committed to um, having a really happy, you know, joyful, grateful day, then obviously we can't be giving into a ton of negativity throughout the day. That would show that we are not committed <laughs> to having that peace of mind, having that high energy state, having that state of passion and enthusiasm and joy and love um, if we're constantly engaging in, in the opposites of that, right? Now, obviously, all of none of us, um, you know, obviously, all of us um, have those moments. I, you know, I don't mean to be super Pollyanna about it, but um, to me, it's just a matter of a decision. Again, we're human beings with free will. We have the ability to make decisions and make choices for ourselves in this life. And what that means is that, you know, whenever we have that clarity and we make those commitments, you know, we are able to choose that. You know, it doesn't mean that you won't ever have legitimate suffering ever in your life, like a loved one passing away, you know, experiencing that grief, experiencing that loss, um, going through a hardship, like all of us have gone through the situation with COVID. Those, to me, it's like, this is legitimate suffering. This is legitimate hardship. But what I see most of the time, is that a lot of the suffering that we we were putting ourselves through that suffering, right? So today, I just want to leave you all with this question of what is it that you are committed to? What are you really committed to in your art life when it comes to um, the quality of your art, when it comes to uh, your career, when it comes to your financial success as a, an artist? When it comes to how you want to feel at the easel every day as an artist, what is it that you are truly committed to? And then I want to encourage you, once you get clear on that, to stay vigilantly focused on it and really be aware of these are the obstacles that have sabotaged that for me in the past, or these are the things that are not working that I need to try something else or I need to course create. Uh, course correct in that case. So I'm going to leave you with that question today. Um, I encourage you all to really take the time to think about it, write about it, get very, very clear on what it is that you are committed to the most in your art life. And I'll see you in the next podcast. Happy painting, everybody. Bye.